Hi, everybody. This is Ryan Berkmans here on behalf of Real Vision, and I'm joined by Uri Kolodny, co-founder and CEO of Starkware, and Eli Ben Sesson, co-founder and president of Starkware. And we're here to talk to you about Ethereum and scaling Ethereum to global ubiquity. Uri, how are you doing today? How are you? Thanks for having us, Ryan. And Ellie, how about yourself? Pretty good. Great, guys. Well, it's been a very exciting year for Ethereum. Uh, let's start with the basics. Uh, Ethereum, of course, is uh, a successor to Bitcoin, where uh, about 12 years ago, Bitcoin was invented by an anonymous founder, uh, Satoshi Nakamoto. And uh, the core innovation of Bitcoin was that now we can have a computer network where up to half of the participants may be malicious or incompetent, but the total system is still reliable. And then about fast forward six years later, about six years back from today, uh, Vitalik Buterin, the founder of Ethereum, came up with the idea that what if we took the idea behind Bitcoin and an application platform, kind of like the App Store, and glued them together into a programmable blockchain where uh, it had these this wonderful quality that you could always trust it, yet you could also write applications on it. And over the past few years, Ethereum has been flourishing. Uh, decentralized finance has been invented on Ethereum. And as a result, uh, we have organically encountered the need for so-called scaling solutions. So what is a scaling solution and, and how does Starkware fit inside that uh, area of the Ethereum industry? So Uri, uh, could you tell us a bit about why you chose Ethereum uh, and, and how, uh, you know, kind of where the need came from? So, um... Ethereum has a, uh, a scaling problem, and that problem follows directly from Ethereum being a permissionless decentralized network. Uh, because of this uh, social construct, not any technological limitation, but because of this desire to allow anyone from anywhere to uh, be able to verify the integrity of the system, of the state of Ethereum, uh, this poses uh, a very strict limitation on the computational resources that you can demand of any participating node in the network. Consequently, the network can process very few transactions per second, so roughly on the order of 10 or 15 transactions per second. Now, uh, Ethereum has garnered an awful lot of attention and excitement uh, in the world, and in the, in the, there's a thriving ecosystem and demand that goes well beyond 15 transactions a second. That's not very surprising if you consider, for example, that Visa has, uh, they, uh, they claim 65, the ability to support 65,000 transactions per second. We can all agree that 15 transactions per second, per second is not enough for it in global infrastructure for pretty much anything. Um, so so there, therein lies sort of the, the need uh, for a scaling solution. Uh, there have been numerous approaches taken uh, to solving this problem. One approach has been, and this is sort of a, a gradual process over the years, is to say, let's just turn down this decentralization knob just a wee bit. Uh, and this is manifest in the uh, gradually increasing gas limit per block that we see in Ethereum. The gas limit is, in essence, a manifestation of the computational resources required to keep track of, of the state of Ethereum. And over the years, what we've seen is the miners agreeing gradually to increase this number over the years. So it was 10 million gas per block, then 12 and a half, now it's at 15. This in effect is uh, an agreement to reduce the extent of decentralization. And the upside of course, is that you can get slightly get a better scale. So that's that sort of a low, a poor man's uh, scaling solution, sort of like a, really a band-aid that the Ethereum network has put in place. Uh, now, beyond that, there are numerous approaches that people have proposed over the years. We belong, Starkware belongs to a camp uh, that offers what are called rollups. Uh, rollups are a, uh, a family of solutions, of layer two solutions. Layer two meaning something that runs on top of a blockchain, namely Ethereum, and its security is in some way derived from the security uh, uh, bestowed upon it by, by layer one. Um, so rollups essentially mean 
let us, uh, well, we'll talk about the subdivision within the roll-up world, but roll-ups essentially um, propose the following idea. Let's move computation off from the blockchain elsewhere to a cheaper uh, computational environment. And let's conduct some heavier computational work there. And whatever it is we need to do, and that what what that is depends on the type of rollup we're talking about. Whatever it is we need to do back on the on the layer one blockchain on Ethereum in this case, uh, will be less than the original amount of work uh, that we had moved off chain. Um, if you do, if you manage to do that, you get a scaling solution. If you manage to do this, this reduction in computational load is is exponential. Then, then you've really got something uh, exciting in your hands. So that's what we think we've we have here at Starcore. Perfect. So let's unpack that a little. Ethereum is an application platform, and as a result of the Ethereum community's overriding mandate to keep the application platform as decentralized as possible, it has scaling limitations in the sense that this is a world computer that anyone can access. Anyone can build their own application or use one of the existing applications by paying a transaction fee. But because of the sheer global nature of that computer, there's a limitation on the scalability that can be delivered while still keeping that blockchain a credibly neutral foundation that everyone can rely on, that uh, any country may be able to use and know that they can use that level playing field in a way that when they make an agreement with another country or a bank, they're gonna be subject to the same rules of the game as everybody else on Ethereum. And that promise of a level playing field really excites folks about Ethereum and the possibility to build decentralized finance and other kinds of systems on top of Ethereum excites folks. Yet we end up in a situation where because of this limited scale, because of this you know, 15 transactions a second that the Ethereum blockchain can support today, there's a need for third parties to come in, such as Starkware, and you guys make a trade-off. You say, okay, we're going to give up a little bit of what makes Ethereum Ethereum. For example, uh, in, in your case, on the side of uh, censorship resistance, which, which we could get into uh, to some degree. Uh, and as a result of uh, making a new system, that helps Ethereum scale, you guys are able to deliver a uh, fantastic scaling performance that now it's possible to build applications that are uh, many times, you know, many orders of magnitude uh, more scalable and have, uh, you know, millions of users on top of Starkware. It, did I get you right? I think we do something that is even um, better and sounds magical and maybe even counterintuitive, which is to say, we, uh, our technology and our math enables you to scale exponentially without any um, uh, you know, disadvantage or drawbacks. It's not a trade-off where you say, I will you know, lose a little bit here and gain in scale there. No, you will gain in scale here and lose nothing, not the censorship resistance, you know, you're still just as good, nothing. So you, you, now the question comes to mind, well, you know, so why haven't folks done this before? And the answer is that the thing that we're using to achieve this is this, uh, you know, breakthrough math and cryptography that allows you to exponentially scale the amount of transactions without relinquishing any of your assumptions or changing in any which way the structure of the network. And this is what we do when we take our technology, which is called Stark, and put it in a mode that is called a roll-up. You lose nothing in terms of your assumption, your security assumptions, the decentralization of the network, but you gain exponential scale. And the reason this has not been done before is because it is damn hard to get it right from a mathematical, cryptographic and engineering point of view. So just like, you know, if you now have all kinds of new technologies that do things way better, um, whatever, you know, automated speech recognition, you know, deep learning, uh, you're not trading off anything and, you know, losing. No, things have just gotten better by virtue of better 
math and technology. And in a nutshell, that's what we're bringing to the table. Hey, if you like this clip, be sure to check out the full interview and more only on realvision.com forward slash crypto. It's 100% free. Sign up now.